So I, I realized my, my team gonna be my new family technically. Four girls came to pick me up. So oh. I felt actually pretty lucky with that. <laughs> It's so cool, I have everything here and I don't have to take a bus to go to practice. Technically the whole world is opening in front of you when you come here. I would say you have to take the risk. Yo, what's up guys? Uh, I'm here today with a special person. <laughs> with the Tesho. <laughs> uh, the Tesho from the swimming team here at Life University. My good friend Benze from, from the swimming team. And um, he is a very good swimmer. He has <laughs> five school records for Life University, right? Yeah. He's an All-American. He got the second place in the conference. And he, you swam for the Hungarian national team, right? Yeah, correct. That's pretty dope. I'll just have you introduce <laughs> yourself real quick. Hey, guys. My name is Ben Sedort. I'm from Hungary. I'm a swimmer at Life University. And I'm going to be 24 soon. We have, we're going to have a small conversation, a little conversation today about the topic of um, leaving your home, Benza, Benza and me both, we, we came from Europe, so we came a long way, we both been in America for, for a long time and we had these conversations before, like working together, we both work together here on campus, yeah. um, of, of leaving home and that it's not always easy. So Benza, get me started a little bit, mm -hmm. how, how did you first get into the idea of going to America? And college sports mm, so pretty much in my life everything was all about swimming like I had to go to school I studied in school but everything was all around swimming and to be like a good swimmer and to achieve big things in swimming so until I was 18 the idea was I'm gonna go for European Championship World Championship Olympics like I actually was in the national team so everything went yeah. well and when I turned 19 I started to have injuries like mm. I had problems with my back, my shoulders, mm. my knee and other stuff too. And then um, it turned out like maybe it's not a good thing if you're only focusing in your sport because every anything can happen and then if you didn't study or you didn't choose another way to live then mm. you kind of in a problematic situation. So like it turned out I might not gonna go for this um, national team things and Olympics and then in Hungary it's pretty hard to do your sport in a professional level and go for a university like Same these two is not really matching so since I knew a lot of swimmers who already came to the US and started to study here mm -hmm. and still swimming in a high level I started to ask how does it go and what should I do mm -hmm. and like kind of that's how I, I get in the progress and how I figured out about the US Fair enough bro, it's the same in Germany like when I remember how I first got into it, it was pretty similar. Like, I, I, I still wanted to pursue that professional soccer mm -hmm. career, but at the same time, I also wanted to study. And as you said, in Europe, in our countries, it's, it's very difficult to do both of that. Yeah, it is. Because studying takes so much time over there, and the sport takes so much time, and it's both so separate that you yeah, overlap like schedules. and Club everything. and school, and you're yeah. not doing your sport for your school. Yeah, yeah. And then they but, not appreciate but it. That's exactly the cool thing here because it's exactly. so combined which allows us to do exactly these things. To yeah. be in a professional environment, a very competitive environment where we can strive and develop as athletes but then at the same time we earn a degree which gives us so many opportunities especially because like for you and me that's an international degree. We studied, mm. we got it in a different country. That's, that's a great thing. Yeah, that's true. And actually, like the way how they're doing it here, like it's not just you swimming or mm. playing for your university, but like all the teachers knows all your schedule. You can fix everything in mm. it, your classes, your practices. You can even work. So yeah, like yeah. it's actually like a perfect schedule what you can make here. Yeah, that's true. But I mean, there is one one bad thing with all of this. <laughs> you have to leave your home for it. And yeah, you have to leave true. a lot of things behind. Family, friends, your, your, your life. You leave your life behind, basically. Yeah, that's true. So how did you deal with that? How were your first days? Were you afraid before you came here? Mm, to be honest, I wouldn't say I was afraid because I didn't study English before I came to the US. So for mm. me, it took like two years with other difficulties to come to the US so when I finally arrived oh. I was really happy to be here so I wouldn't say I was afraid but in the same time I didn't really talk the language mm. that good yet and like everything was new here so <laughs> I was really glad to have another Hungarian person who could help me out yeah. and also the the swimming team the coaches everyone helped me a lot 
and even the teachers were like kind of patient with me in the beginning. Uh -huh. That's good, yeah. But yeah, it was it was definitely a bit of shock actually. <laughs> <laughs> what what, is, what exactly shocked you? I mean, just the fact like you fly here and in the airport, you don't even oh know yeah. what is where, <laughs> and then you have to go through the visa check, and there yeah, is yeah. like more than hundred people there, and they checking mm. your visa and everything, and you just standing there and like, what the hell I am doing? Yeah, man. Do you still remember like the day when you arrived in America? Yeah. <laughs> how how was that? It was night time, I remember, and four girls came to pick me up. So oh. I felt actually pretty lucky with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah, yeah. You thought you woke up in a dream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, they came, to, they picked me up, and we went through Atlanta, and it was night time. And mm. you know, when you drove to Atlanta, it's like the lights and the buildings, yeah, and it yeah, is yeah. just amazing, like yeah. in the movies. So it was a pretty good mm. first thing to see. That's cool. And then I arrived to the commons. I was traveling like 20 hours or so, so I was really tired. And then other people from the swimming team came, came to say hi and mm. everything. I didn't even have a room, so I just went to someone's room to sleep. Oh, yeah. And I didn't know you actually have to bring a pillow and a blanket. <laughs> I thought they're going to give it to me here. So like they gave me that stuff too, oh. and I just went to straight to sleep. I was really yeah, tired. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. I remember my first day as well. It was pretty similar. I arrived. It was back in Omaha when I arrived there. Uh. And I arrived with another German guy. We both freshmen, so we both <laughs> knew. And we didn't really know who was going to pick us up at the airport. And yeah. then we were like, Omaha airport at night is pretty empty. At least on that day, it was pretty empty. Mm -hmm. So it was just me and him outside and there was almost no one else. And there was this country music playing outside <laughs> and we were both like, whoa, where did we just go? <laughs> and then after 30 minutes, the assistant coach picked us up and we drove home. It was, uh, it was a funny experience as well. Yeah, no, it's actually kind of uh, a good thing if you have someone from your country mm, here definitely. already and definitely. they can help you a lot. Other question though, so, so once you arrived here, mm. how were your first impressions? How was, how was the time, the first couple of days here? Mm. I think when, when you arrive here, like you see something that is not a really usual thing in Hungary, like mm. a big complex where you have the university, the fields, the workplace where you work obviously i didn't know that time i'm gonna work in the gym but yeah like the the athletic training rooms like everything is just all together and in hungary is like there is a university there is one campus there is another one in the other side of the city so it's like not that all together everything you know so mm -hmm. the first time when i arrived and i walked around and i was like what the hell it's so big and everything mm -hmm. obviously how the years pass you just used to it and yeah, it gets smaller yeah. in your eyes but when I arrived, it was like, it's so cool. I have everything here and I don't have to take a bus to go to practice or yeah, stuff yeah. like this. Like in back home, you're taking a bus 15 minutes in a good case to go to practice or something. Bro, that's and so true. I forgot about this. Actually. Yeah, How did you just say it? Here you just walk five minutes and you are at school. You walk 10 minutes, you are in practice. So like, it's just everything is together. That's crazy, bro. I, I used to drive like over an hour with the train or the bus <laughs> to go to training in Germany. I completely forgot like this is yeah. a, this is a luxury like for real that we forget to appreciate sometimes mm -hmm. like me i forgot it and we literally walk 10 minutes to the field for my case and yeah there's so many so many small things that we sometimes sometimes don't appreciate as college athletes yeah, that's true and for me it w like i noticed that a lot by myself for myself because i started in nebraska and then two years later i started over here again so i had that mm -hmm. new feeling mm -hmm. twice and I realized that like those first days are the, f the days where you walk through like wow 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 because mm -hmm. you see so much new after a while yeah. you get used to it but I still catch myself sometimes walking outside there with all like especially now in spring when the weather is beautiful all the trees and like wow it's beautiful yeah and I, I think what is cool as an athlete is not just like it's time management all the time like you have mm. practices and if you want to perform good then you have to manage your time right mm. and like here you can actually manage it because you can put your classes almost wherever you wanna according mm -hmm. to your practice times and also you can put your work hours if you wanna work and it's gonna just make you a good schedule what mm -hmm. you can follow and you i mean in my case i even can take naps during the day bad so yeah and uh, and also what what was weird for me or a new thing for me in the beginning is like you have actually a, not a doctor, but an athletic trainer oh, yeah. who is, mm. if you have 
something problematic, you just go there and they're gonna mm -hmm. fix you. And in Hungary, it, it doesn't work like that. Like you have a master, okay. But like you don't have actually a doctor who gonna do something mm -hmm. with you if you get injured. And here sure. you just walk other five minutes there and they already like right after practice and they already gonna do something with you. That's true. And then you're not passing weeks and days until you get an appointment to a doctor, like in back home. Oh and my then God, yeah. Yeah, For I real. could talk about <laughs> this. It's <laughs> <laughs> another topic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but back to our topic. Were you ever homesick? Yeah, actually, a lot. Yeah? And yeah. when was like the first time you felt homesick? Mm, actually, in my first year, I could handle it pretty good, but it's mm. also because you come somewhere where is everyone new. Right, right. And everything is new. So in my first year, I came here, like I just wanted to explore everything, but I just can like mm. just the city Atlanta was for me totally new and I wanted to see everything in it mm. and like other things. So. So in my first year, I would say because of COVID, I didn't go home in winter. And obviously mm. it was weird to spend the first Christmas without family and mm. my brothers. But I would say I handled it pretty good. Okay. And in the summer, I even stayed to work a couple of months. So in my first year, I spent 11 months in the US and just mm. one home. Mm. Around nine months, I started to feel a bit homesick. And since my second year, this last two years, I actually feel more than more and more and more homesick. Yeah. yeah, and it comes up more and more actually. Damn, that's interesting. I personally, I don't really feel homesick to be mm -hmm. honest, because I have that. For me, it's like I feel like I'm so busy that I don't have the time to feel feel mm -hmm. homesick. But how do you deal with it then? Actually, that's what you said. It's a pretty important thing. Like I'm just trying to make myself busy as mm. much as I can because if you're busy, then it's it's really good for me to be in the US when I'm busy. Really? If I'm not busy that much, like right now we don't have that much practice, then I'm a bit start to think about family, brothers, mm -hmm. like places or friends in home. And then obviously you miss it a bit more than usually. But that's yeah, that, that's the key, I think, what you said to make yourself busy and then mm -hmm. you're just gonna live day by day and don't think about it that much. Mm -hmm. And if I wanna be honest, mm -hmm. kinda your whole team is mm -hmm. a family. like. When I came here after two weeks, I, I realized my, my team gonna be my new family technically. Mm -hmm. and, wow. and it actually helps, like you hang out with them, you actually rely on them. So mm -hmm. it's like technically your new family here. Oh, that's deep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Have you ever had the thoughts about stopping and just leaving, go back to Hungary? No. No? No. Like even though I was homesick, I was pretty sure I'm, I want to finish it and I actually enjoying to be in the US. So mm -hmm. no, I was never thinking about leaving it. What's what's something you really enjoy here? Mm, I mean, I have to put swimming in the first place as all in my life, mm -hmm. but I'm studying in the last, but anyway, <laughs> <laughs> it's just me. Uh, I would say it's really cool to meet a lot of new people yeah, definitely. and like to new to realize there is a lot of other cultures and like explore them, to talk mm. with other people, to like, like technically the whole world is opening in front of you when you come here. And like mm. Europeans almost counts as Hungarians and like, you know, so like, mm. it's like you make so much new connections, but what is really good. And like, even after university gonna be really good. Mm -hmm. And also the other thing is to go to places like, there is so much places in the US where I didn't mm. go yet and I mm. actually wanna. So yeah, these two things definitely really good. Yeah, same. I mean, the opportunities you get by being a college athlete, uh, athlete are uh, crazy. And yeah. as you mentioned, it opens up the world for you. I can literally visit people in South Korea, in Brazil, in, yeah. in Mali, in Bulgaria, in Hungary, everywhere, Italy. Yeah. It's, there's just something like, wow. I wouldn't be able to say how many nationalities I met. No, me neither. Like I just mentioned a few. There's like yeah. ten thousand more <laughs> where I have very close friends. South Africa. Very close friends from like all over the world and that's that's amazing. I feel like that can also help with the homesickness because you get mm -hmm. introduced to so much new cultures. Yeah. Yeah, that's one thing. Yeah. Mm. And the other thing is like, you know, exactly other people going through the same as you. Mm. And like, yeah, true. Mm. like you, you in Germany, you have the same things. 
the mm. same distance almost as me. So yeah, like yeah. people actually going through the same thing and this actually helps too. Yeah, there's a lot of people from a lot of different backgrounds who go through the same thing. Yep. <laughs> if, you, if you look back at your, your time here in college from the day you arrived mm -hmm. until now, mm -hmm. how do you think you developed? I think for me the biggest development is like two things. First of all, I get way more responsible about things. Mm -hmm. Like it can be about money or any other things, but since I am alone and standing on my own legs now, mm -hmm. I'm, I actually learned a lot and, and get more responsible. And the other thing is like, I think I face things like in, in back home when I face something hard, I always had my backup with my mm -hmm. family, mm -hmm. brothers, friends and everything. And even though here they are still trying to help sometimes and they are still there for you obviously and obviously you're gonna have new friends here who are the same mm. but like i feel here i i learned to face problems alone and solve problems alone so i would say this is the two biggest thing that i am pretty sure i developed also yeah. like you know you arrive in the us and you have to do small things like mm. just get a phone or just get a phone number or mm. bank account and these are not bad things and not yeah. hard things yeah. but you used to go and maybe like call your father okay how did you do that and then okay he tells you and you do yeah. it but here you just realize like okay i actually gonna go there talk a different language not my language mm -hmm. and then figure it out how i'm doing it and like obviously that's the point point where it's good to have like teammates who are older yeah. here and came here a longer time ago because then you can they're gonna help you and then they're gonna show you what to do yeah. so yeah but that's definitely one thing like you cannot rely on your parents anymore yeah, no, that's, sure. that's a big point. I think it's so mo so important for growing up, though. And that's a point that yeah, we, by by studying in a different country, so far away from our parents, I think that's something that we can learn so much more in depth than people who study in their home country, even if they live a little bit away from, from their parents. It's just yeah. a completely different experience if you're like so far away and but that also shows us because you mentioned how important it is to have like teammates around you who can help you with that mm -hmm. i mean we as international students both of us we don't have a car so people from team uh, our teammates who have a car who gives give us rides that makes our life so much easier and it yeah. shows as well how important community is for humanity because we need these communities to, to yeah prosper. for sure for sure yeah. yeah definitely and if there would be someone else in your in, in the position you were three four years ago knowing okay i will leave my home soon mm -hmm. and maybe a little bit afraid what's going to happen what would what would be your advice mm. i would say you have to take the risk and like who is taking risk in in his life or in her life it's gonna be like paid off later so like mm. i would say it could be scary and there is a lot of things that you can think about what it's like new and scary and everything but if you take the risk it's gonna pay off later and it's fair definitely enough, worth it bro, fair enough thanks for sharing that i will definitely remember that sure. advice. <laughs> <laughs> and um, also thank you so much for sharing so much personal stuff about your life yeah sure um, you're an inspiration tesho <laughs> can't say more than that you're an inspiration and for everyone who's back at home in their home country thinks about coming to america um, studying in america is is uh, experience that will remain for a lifetime and you can learn so much as we just talked about it's not always easy there are difficult times but there's a lot you can learn and a lot ways you can develop as a person as an athlete and as a student so if you're interested in a life like this in an experience like this make sure to send me a message my contact information are linked down below make sure to reach out to me if you have any questions i would be more than happy to help you peace